Good morning. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for coming in to this Facebook Live. We're going to give Facebook just a minute to get the word out there. But while you are coming on, I want to invite you to our Women of Weight Empowerment Conference. I want to invite you to Deerfield, Illinois. I want to invite you to go ahead on my website at www.touchdownsenterprise.com. And I want to invite you to register, register virtually, register for the free evening um, sessions. Come to this move of God. My team and I have been praying and fasting and before the Lord, seeking God to do what only he can do in this atmosphere. For those of you that are new to while in route, my name is Sherry Downs. Welcome. I want to empower you as you travel in your destiny. And I want to empower you with tools to be successful that you travel well. So as you come in, go ahead, share, like, comment, invite. Let me know you are on here with me and let me know where you are watching from. I am a coach, a mentor, a author, a conference host, and a speaker, and I just love the Lord. So I am empowered and assigned to come and empower you to reach your destiny, to walk out this thing with wisdom, with counsel, with uh, tools that you can be successful. So as you come in, share this with somebody that you know needs this word. Today, I want to empower you with the power of a strong mind. I want to talk about our minds and how God wants our minds to be strong and how when we are empowered in our minds, we can accomplish great things for the Lord share the video, invite somebody on. And hey, if you're coming to Deerfield, bring somebody with you. You want don't want to um, reap the benefits of this weekend and not be able to share it with somebody else. We're going to have an empower. We're going to have a powerful time in the Lord and we're going to have an impactful time. I also want to invite those that are looking for a coach or a mentor to go on my website and register for or purchase one of my group coaching packages or even one-on-one -on -one packages so that we can walk with you into your destiny so that you can accomplish everything that God placed you in this earth to do. Because that's the goal for every believer is to walk and travel in destiny, fulfilling the mandate on their lives. The power of a strong mind. That's what we're going to talk about today. And I just really felt the weight of the Holy Spirit upon this message that he um, began to give me about the mind <clears throat> and how, <laughs> excuse me, let me drink some water, <clears throat> and how we need to be strong in our minds in order to accomplish the things that God has placed us in <clears throat> the earth to accomplish. <laughs> so type in the comments while I drink this water, the power of a strong mind, the power of a strong mind. All right. The power of a strong mind. Many of us are walking this Christian journey and it's, Sometimes the enemy whips us back and forth and he brings us thoughts, ideas. He brings us things that are contrary to the will of God. He brings us words, accusations, things that are against what God is saying for our lives. But as Christ followers, those that are walking by faith and not by sight, we have to understand when we step into the kingdom of God, Again, I've said this before on a previous teaching, as we step into the kingdom of God, 
all things become new. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So we need to learn how to walk in our new identity. We cannot be double agents bringing over into the spiritual realm the things we learn in the carnal realm, meaning the flesh suit. We learn things uh, in our walk in the flesh, in our carnal state, uh, in your um, uh, flesh suit, so to speak. So we learn the ways of the world through the flesh. But when we step into the kingdom of God, there's a new spiritual awakening and reality that God wants us to walk in. And I just feel the weight of God that this uh, teaching that we're going to do this week, Wednesday and Friday, is going to empower those that are listening to walk in such a way that they step outside of the carnal realm and into the spiritual realm and begin to be built up in, in their mind so that they can win every battle. You cannot win spiritual battles without having a strong mind because that is where the battlefield is. Type in the comments, build up my mind. I'm building up my mind. I'm building up my mind. That is the goal of the Christian life, that we be built up in such a way that we are strong in mind to be able to resist all the tactics of the enemy. So we are building you up in this season. The Lord will take a season and begin to build up your mind, begin to renew your mind to think like Christ. And in order to do that, you sometimes have to get around a culture of people that are already walking in that light, that are living life with the mind of Christ, not as double agents, not saying that it's okay to walk in the flesh because what God wants us to do ultimately is to live life in the spirit. And here it is, it is attainable. Type in the comments, it is attainable. Sometimes I hear people, different people speak or share um, their viewpoint and they give excuse for walking in the flesh. They give excuse for having a low level thinking. One of the things I heard Joyce Meyer say before is she said, you'll pay a high price for low thinking. So when we think low and we're trying to live in the kingdom of God, we'll ultimately pay a high price for it because our thinking is lower than what God wants us to think. And we're giving over value. We're giving over things to the enemy because we don't have the mind of Christ. We're not strong in our mind. And sometimes people in your bloodline that came before you forfeited the things that God wanted them to have because they were not mentally strong enough to wage war against the demonic realm. They were not mentally strong enough to resist the natural and step into the realm of the spirit and contend in the spiritual realm for everything God wants for you. You're going to have to learn how to step into the realm of the spirit and build up your mind in God to the degree that you win. Type in the comments. I know I'm not a loser. I'm going to win. You don't want to live this life and be defeated. What do I mean by be defeated? You never see any victories. You never grow in maturity to with God to the degree that you become a sharp tool in his hand. You never reach the place of maturity where you go on to meet. You never reach the place where you are walking in tandem with the Holy Spirit, accomplishing everything that God has placed on the inside of you. Type in the comments, it's in me and I have to get it out. God placed within every one of us seeds. God placed within every one of us. And I mean, every one of us, a calling, a destiny. Everybody's calling and destiny looks different. Everybody is here to accomplish something in the earth, but it is your responsibility to journey with God because it's a personal thing. He's a personal savior. He's a 
personal God. It's your responsibility. Type in the comments. I take ownership. You have to take ownership and govern your life and not pass the blame on fivefold gifting. Well, they didn't teach me right. Well, they did this. They did that. That's not going to get you results. When I know that everything pertaining to life and godliness, God has already given it to me, then I'm going to put the necessary tools in place to see my life become the abundant life that God has ordained for me to have. There is a place of abundance. Type in the comments. I will flourish. God wants every one of his children to flourish. But in order for us to get to that flourishing place, the Bible says that we have to be renewed in our minds. We have to take off the mind of the world and be renewed by the spirit of God. We have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. What does that mean? The nature of our mind and our thoughts has to change. Type in the comments, I have a new nature. What is nature? Nature is inclination, what I, I'm inclined to do, what I naturally gravitate to, what I instinctively do as it relates to my actions, my thoughts, what I say. So my mind has to be re renewed in its nature. I can no longer think like the world. Let me give you an example. If everybody in their mama is gravitating towards a certain idea, chances are God is not in that idea. God is not in that thought process because his ways are not our ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. So we have to be very careful of the doctrines, the teachings, and the things that we begin to grab hold to and ask God, is this your thought? Or is this the way of the world? Is this your process or is this how the world does it? Because we want to be those that are set apart. Philippians chapter two, verse five says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So here it is. We are given a command to have a certain type of mind. We are given a command to have a mind that looks like Jesus, that patterns the mind of Christ. And a lot of people, and, and this is, I'm going to use this forever in a day, because a lot of people use that term try Jesus, not me. That is such a demonic song and such a demonic infiltration in the kingdom of God that says you can try Jesus, but not try me. That's a, a doctrine of demons teaching people not to be like Christ. Come on. We have to see these things for what they are. And when we grab hold of these things, we then counsel our mind through demonic um, infiltration through songs, through ways of the world, through fads and trends. And we begin to be lower class beings, not living in the realm of the spirit, which Jesus Christ died for us to access. So we have to begin to guard our minds and know what God is saying and what he's not saying to live in the realm of a powerful mind. You need to have a strong mind and the enemy knows those that he cannot mess with. Those will be the, the ones that become overcomers. Type in the comments, I will overcome. You want to be one that overcomes the flesh. You want to be one that overcomes every trick, every scheme, every plot, every ploy, every tactic of the enemy to hinder you from stepping into your destiny, to hinder you from stepping into the overthrow of God. When you step into the overthrow of God, you have overcome the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. And you have literally died to the carnal world. And now you live in the realm of the spirit and you are unstoppable. 
type in the comments, overthrow, here I come. When you get to overthrow, you are an overcomer and the devil cannot do anything with you. When your mind is so strong, he can't send his imps. He can't send his ministers to stop you from speaking the truth. Just like the disciples, when they began to preach and teach the gospel after Jesus went to um, heaven, he sent them out. He charged them. And the Bible says, and they took the world by storm. They turn things upside down. They begin to preach and teach with power and conviction. And the religious leaders of that day and those that opposed them tried to do everything to stop them, but they were unstoppable. They were unstoppable. They wrote about God. They spoke about God. They preached about God. They healed, delivered, took territories for God because they had gotten to a place of overthrow. But here it is. If the enemy can bombard your mind with seeds, type in the comments, I have a strong mind. If the enemy can bombard your mind through seeds of of uh, through seeds of Satan, he can hinder you, block you, stop you from accessing your season of overthrow. He can block you from getting to the place of overthrow. If he can tell you, you can't do that. You're not enough. You don't look the part. You don't have the education. You don't, you're too old. You're too young. If he can bring thoughts to you and you believe those thoughts because your mind has not been renewed, your mind is not strong enough to withstand those things, you will be blocked and barriers will be placed in front of you and you'll never reach the place of overthrow. So what we have to do in order to build our minds up, we got to take on the mind of Christ. Type in the comments, I have the mind of Christ. When we have a strong mind, we are taking on the mind of Christ. How do I know the mind of Christ? Well, I got to get in the word to know how Christ dealt with things, to see how he responded to opposition, to see what his mindset was. What was Christ's focus? His focus was to do the will of his father. The focus was to accomplish everything that he was sent to earth to accomplish. When he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. What was finished? His work here on earth. He had done and said and did and planted everything that he came here to do. My God today. And then the apostle Paul took on the same mind. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. What does that mean? Everything that Paul was assigned to do, he had emptied himself out. Everything that was in him, he emptied himself out. Everything God told him to do, he emptied himself out. He didn't let God tell him, now I want you to do a podcast. Now I want you to do uh, books. Now I want you to get on live. Now I want you to start mentoring. Now I want you to preach. Everything God told him to do, he began to step into it. Type in the comments, no more fear. I'm stepping out in faith. So when we have a strong mind, we become those that want to finish the work that Christ started. Christ said it is finished. He didn't say we were finished. He said his work was finished. His portion of it was done. Now we have to finish what he started. Mm. Type in the comments, I'll finish what you started. So, so, so when we have the mind of Christ, we become those that will also finish our work. We become those that will be relentless for the mission of heaven. We become those that will be about our father's business. We become those that become unstoppable. We become those that declare, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are 
uh, pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, this is what we do. We begin to think on these things. So if I have the mind of Christ, share this video, invite somebody on. If I had the mind of Christ, I become unstoppable. I become one that wants to leave the earth empty because everything that I need is in me. I have to transform my mind from how the world thinks to how God thinks. I have to take off the old nature and live in the realm of the spirit to access and experience everything that I am ordained to experience. So I have to get around a culture that walks in this way. I have to get around a culture that understands this position because if I don't get around a culture that says we're a people that are moving and doing everything God says, if God told you to write a book, we want to help you do it. If God told you to birth something, we want to help you get it out. Why? Because we are helping the mission of Christ. As many people, as, as many people that we can help get out of them what's in them. We are helping the kingdom of God. We are on assignment for the kingdom of heaven. We are equipping ministers. We are equipping sons and daughters of God to step into who they are, not in a toxic way, not in a religious form, denying the power of God to bring transformation, not in a carnal way, not being double ages, but being those that have clean hands and a pure heart that are walking after the will of God. Type in the comments, I'm thinking on these things. So we have to begin to be ones that have a new nature in our minds, that have a new culture. Our minds have to have a renewed culture. What is the culture of my mind? How does it think? What are the things that I'm dwelling on? What are the things that I'm thinking on? The Bible tells me to have the mind of Christ, but then it also tells me to think on these things. Things. So the mind of Christ thinks on these things, and this is how the transformation happens. My God, the Bible tells me, be ye transformed in the renewing of your mind. But what is the mind of Christ? Thinking higher thoughts. Type in the comments, I'm coming up higher. So God wants us to come up higher. What is that high place? The high place is the rhema of God. The high place is the logos of God. The word of God is what we should meditate on day and night. I'm coming up higher to believe what God says for his word to be final authority. If God said go, guess what? That's final authority. That is what it is. That's what's going to happen. That's how I'm moving. Why? Because this is what my mind is used to responding to. This is what my mind embraces. This is what my mind walks after. The just shall live by faith. And listen, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. When you living by faith, you're living by what he said. So my mind only responds to what he says. I often counsel and I mentor and I talk with people and I have conversations and I often ask, well, what is God saying? If you don't know what is God saying, you have nothing to stand on. You have no foundation. If you don't know what God is saying concerning your marriage, concerning your family, concerning your finances, concerning your ministry, you have to get in a culture of prophetic people so that somebody can hear God on your behalf. You need somebody that will hear the word of the Lord so that God can speak to you through his vessel. 
Don't be a lone ranger. Don't be somebody that there are no mentors in your life. There are no people that are that speaking into your life, that you're walking with. I thank God that he sent me mentors and spiritual mothers and ministers of the gospel that spoke into my life, that he used to point out the way. He used them with word of wisdom. He used them with prophetic utterance. When I couldn't hear because of the battle that was raging, he sent people to speak. And oftentimes people want these grand experiences with God. They want God to show up in the living room. They want God to show up uh, uh, while they're in their secret place. But the Lord says, can you hear me through my messengers? Can you hear me through those that I empower with the word? Those that are already mature enough to hear him, to give you prophetic utterance. God will speak through his messengers. But if you're distrusting of people, if your heart is impure and childlike, you will begin to reject those that come with the word from the Lord. If you're always suspect, if you let your wounds uh, block the voice of God coming from people. Listen, if God can use a donkey, God can use anybody. God will speak through his messenger. And uh, the, the story of Jesus, when he, he was in uh, Hades and the man was saying, please let me go back and tell my brothers not to come to this place. Let me go back and warn them to serve you. Let me go back and tell them that this place is horrible and they don't want to go, uh, uh, come here. And, and Jesus responded and say, they have the, the messengers. They have the prophets. They have those that I will send to them. If they won't believe them, they're not going to believe you when you are raised from the dead. They're not going to believe your report. You have to believe those who are fivefold giftings and those that God is rising up in this hour to be the voice that he is using to herald his message. Begin to have childlike expectation. That is the mind of Christ. He often look at the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees because they did not have childlike faith to believe. Jesus says, if you don't enter into the kingdom of God, like this little child with out resistance. Children are sponges. They soak up everything, but God will give you discernment as well to know what's a, a, a wolf, to know what's a lie. He will teach you how to discern what's good and evil. But when you're in the kingdom of God, you have to experience it like a child. You have to begin to soak up everything and trust the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, looking on to Jesus. When we look Look to Jesus, he'll begin to say, no, that's not me. No, that's a lie. No, that's not my character because this is what I do. Holy Spirit in you will begin to uh, work off the truths and tell you what's the vessel and what's him. You'll begin to journey with God, looking unto Jesus. Don't idolize man. Look to Jesus. Look to God. And this was the mind of Jesus. Jesus spent time with his father. Jesus would often steal away to have private time of prayer. Jesus would often uh, 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 refer back to, I do nothing that I do not see my father do. This is the thing. The father was revealing to Jesus what to do. The father was going ahead of him. He was preparing the way. He was opening doors. He was preparing hearts. He was putting people in the right place. We get a look into this with Samaria, where the woman was at the well. Jesus already knew he had to go there. Jesus already knew that woman was going to be there. How did he know that? The father revealed it. So we need to be ones that have the mind of Christ and God will prepare the way. God will prepare the people for when you get to where you need to go for the assignment of the Lord. This is the mind of Christ. We are losing battles because our mind is not strong. The enemy is able to counsel our mind. The enemy is able to keep us in a low place of our identity because we have not built ourselves up in our mind and be ye transformed by the renewing renew, make new again, bring new thoughts 
new ideas, new position, new culture. So if I had a low, low self-esteem before I got saved, I shouldn't have a low self-esteem after I get saved. Why? Because I have a new culture in my mind. I have a new nature inclination. I have a new nature in my mind, the way my mind processes, the way my mind thinks it's all new. So what you want to do when you are a Christ follower, was I this way before? I, if I was lazy before I got saved and I didn't accomplish anything, Thing. Now that I'm saved, I should be on fire. I should be producing. My ground should flourish. I should, you should be changed. There should be change in your mind. So here it is. We have to recognize the mind, the mouth, and the heart connection. There is a connection between your mind, your heart, and your mouth. Whatever a man thinketh, so is he. There is power in your words. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what I dwell on, what I think on goes into my heart and out of my mouth. What I dwell on, I'll say that again for the people in the back, type in the comments, say it again, prophetess. What I dwell on goes into the heart and out of the mouth. So if I dwell on you're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, and the devil is feeding that seed to me, and I dwell on it long enough without casting it down, that thought is going to seep into my heart, and I'm going to begin to embrace it and cultivate it and believe it. And then it comes out of my mouth, and I speak out of that, and it activates what I believe. It activates what I believe. So the mind is the the first ground place of the battlefield. The mind is the first ground of the battlefield. So here it is, Romans 12 and 2. When we are transformed by the renewing of our mind, this looks like the pattern of this world belonging to Satan. Hear me. If you have not shared this, share it. If you have not gotten your ticket for Women of Weight 20 and 23, go to my website and purchase it, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. So ever since Adam fell to temptation, the insurrection in the garden, because of this, hear me, we are born into sin. And so we sin along with the rest of the world. The world or the dominion of darkness has particular ways, hear me, and goes round by certain means. The world has a system and a way of doing things, right? And they achieve things in certain ways in the world. The world in the dominion of darkness. The enemy is the prince of this world world. And if I don't have a strong mind renewed and rooted in Christ, a mind that looks like Christ, that my actions line up with Christ, that my words line up with Christ, that my thoughts line up with Christ, that the culture of my heart is pure like and childlike as Christ was, then I begin to be one that is saved but I'm not saved out of darkness. I still live like the world. I still experience life like the world. So here it is. Every Christian who is saved is saved out of that dominion. When you are saved, God saves you out of the world system. God saves you out of that culture. God saves you out of that nature. God saves you out of that thinking pattern, the low self-esteem, the depression, the sickness, the disease, that pattern and the way of thinking and doing things. You are no longer bound. Hear me. God wants to build up your mind in this area. God wants you to know who you really are. When we know who we are in our mind, it will go into our hearts and it will come out of our mouth and our actions. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are taught that everything, everything is exactly the opposite of what we once thought. Here it is. How you once did things, 
Now in the kingdom of God, if you're not doing anything differently, you haven't been brought out of that world. You haven't been brought completely out of darkness. You might be a double agent. You might be still bound. You might still be uh, uh, bound by uh, addictions, bound by lust, bound by perversion, bound by things that God has already freed you from. So you are no longer bound by those things. You have dominion. Here it is. You've come to a higher realm. You are a higher class of being. When you step over into Christ, type in the comments, live higher, live higher. This is the inheritance that we all have that we can be tried like Jesus was because we will be unstoppable because we won't fall prey to the enemy's tricks and tactics. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are taught that everything is exactly the opposite of what we once thought. Listen, if you slept around, it's the opposite. If you did things without answering to anybody, it's the opposite. If you had isolation, the kingdom of God is the opposite. How you live before you got saved, even if you came as a child, God will start delivering you from religion and patterns and things that are contrary to his kingdom. So as followers of Jesus Christ, when things are opposite, we are renewed. Our, our renewed spirit is totally different and agrees with the ways of heaven. But our flesh, here it is, is not yet quite so renewed, okay? Our flesh isn't quite so renewed. So God has to deal with our flesh. Our renewed spirit um, is totally different and agrees with heaven, but our flesh is not renewed. Therefore, it has embedded within its nature. Hear me, your habits. The things that you naturally would do, your flesh, your emotions, your will, your mind, it has embedded the ways of the world that run according to the elementary principles of the world. These ways are eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, self-ambition, self-promotion, going after your dreams without God placing that dream in your heart. Everything is God initiated in the kingdom of God. Everything is by invitation in the kingdom of God. Your calling is by invitation. Your gifts, your talents, your abilities, things that God wants you to do is always by invitation because we are following Christ. And when we follow Christ in relationship, here it is. Christ is going to tell us what's in the heart of the father. Uh, we can't do things on our own because it looks prosperous for somebody else and they're getting results. We have to do things that Christ tells us that's in the heart of the father for us. This is the mind of Christ because Christ said, I don't do anything that I don't see my father do. Meaning I do what my father tells me to do. I am on assignment by God and what he says is what I do. Same with us. We are on assignment by God and what Jesus tells us that the father is saying unto us and has for us, that is the thing that we do. So we have to live connected to God so that our minds can always receive the downloads of heaven. Type in the comments, my mind is renewed and I'm in position. If your mind is not renewed, you cannot be a usable tool in God's hand because your mind, the nature of our minds has to be able to receive the instructions and the directions and the downloads of heaven. Jesus told the disciple, I have a need to go through Samaria. The natural culture of the Jewish people was to go around, was to not go to Samaria, was to have no, you see what I'm saying? The nature of religious culture, the nature of the world, God's directions, God's will, God's plans, God's assignments, how God does things will oftentimes more than not be contrary to religion, 
contrary to the status quo, contrary to how people build things, how people get things done. You know, in in the world, they tell you step on people to get to where you want to go. Uh, pull people down in order to go high. That's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is you go low and God will exalt you. So we have to know what the nature of the kingdom looks like. We have to know what the mind of Christ looks like. We have to study the word of God so that we understand how the kingdom operates in order for our minds to have that culture. So he wants us, the spirit within us, by the Holy Spirit to be empowered. Type in the comments, I'm empowered with grace. When we have built our minds up, we know how to affirm ourselves. Like David said, I encourage myself in the Lord. Only somebody with a strong mind can encourage themselves in God. Sometimes people are looking for affirmation and applause to come from outside sources, but we can build ourselves up in our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. We can build ourselves up by affirming ourselves in the word of God, affirming ourselves by speaking forth out of the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, who we are as it relates to God's word, God's kingdom, and what God has said about us. Let me ask you this. Do you know what God has said concerning you? Do you know what God has said concerning your children? Do you know what God has said concerning your marriage? Do you know what God has said concerning your ministry? I want to implore you and beg of you. If you do not know, get in your prayer closet. Begin to ask God these vital questions. Begin to say, God, what is your plan for me? God, what is your plan for my children? God, give me a word to stand on, a prophetic word, a rhema word, a logos word to stand on. Don't just go to the scriptures and just point to a word and pick it out. No, you want the Holy Ghost to blow upon a word. You want to get in a prophetic culture. You want to get in a place where you can build up your mind with other people who are becoming and transforming just like you. If God has placed a calling upon your life, get in a culture that will strengthen you. Get in a culture of accountability. Get in a culture where everybody is thinking on these things, casting down imagination, high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. This is, I'm going to leave you with this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, share this video. And if you have not registered for Women of Weight 20 and 23, you want to go to the website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. And you want to register, come to the free evening services, but you have to register for that too. The tickets are free, but you have to go on the website and register. Uh, come to the full event, you're welcome to purchase any ticket that you want, but you need to be in this atmosphere. So you want to get in a prophetic atmosphere where there's prophecy happening, where God can speak to you, where God can uh, give you direction and instructions to follow, because God will often speak through others to you. And nothing's wrong with that. That's how the kingdom operates. That's how we're not long rangers. That's how we are a body because the body functions together. So 2 Corinthians chapter 10, three through five, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Here it is. When we don't live in the world, we got to learn how to fight. We got to learn how to wage war. We have to learn what kind of battle we're in. Whether you fight or not, you are in the battle. Whether you acknowledge it or not, you are in the battle. Whether you engage or not, you are in the battle. Whether you put your dukes up and join in the fight, you still in it. So you might as well come out victorious. You might as well mature to become one that can be a sniper in the realm of the spirit. So you have to learn how to wage war. It's not after the flesh. So the carnal way of thinking, 
It has to be different. This war that I'm in, I have to respond different. I have to talk different. I have to think different. My actions need to be different. It's going to be a different way of being. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. They are mighty. The Bible says they are mighty. They are big. They are powerful. They are bomb-like materials. They are weapons of mass destruction through God. The only way we can deploy and use this weaponry is through God. When God says, now do this. Remember, Jesus said, I only do what I, what I see my father do. So when we're deploying our weaponry, it's because God told us. God told us how to defeat the devil. You don't go into spiritual warfare by yourself. You, you, you hear his voice and you do what he says because he's with you. Type in the comments. He is with me. When you are engaging this warfare, you're not alone. Type in the comments. I'm never alone. Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So the weapons are mighty because God is giving us the weaponry. He's telling us what to use. He knows what the enemy is doing and he knows how to bring you out victorious. Jesus, if you have not registered, I'm telling you, you want to be in Deerfield, Illinois. We have been fasting. We have been praying. We have been petitioning God. And God is going to meet us in a powerful manner. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. So they have to come through God. Your weapon of choice, what is going to defeat your enemy? must come from God. God has to tell me, now shoot your cannon. Now be quiet. Now show love. Write. Do a podcast. Get on Facebook Live. See, our weapons are not carnal. They don't look like the world's look. I'm not going to fight tooth and nail. I'm not going to try to defend myself. I'm not going to get on Facebook and try to self-preserve um, my reputation, my backup, my prophetic word that God gave. No, my weapons come from God. I'm going to do what he tells me to do in this war so I can come out victorious. Pulling down strongholds, not only in your mind, but also in the mind of those that have spoke against you. You're going to pull those strongholds down because they're, go they're going to see who your God is. They're going to see whose side you are really on. They're going to see how God shows up for you. They're going to see how God lifts you. They're going to see, you're going to put those lies down that they believed about you. This is where the Bible says your weapons of uh, um will not prosper, but you'll condemn every word that was spoken against you. This is the inheritance. How am I condemning it? Because God's going to show them. God's going to vindicate. God's going to raise that, that person up that is engaging in that warfare, okay? So casting down imagination, you're going to amaze yourself. <laughs> the things that God will do when you start walking with him and he starts giving you the weapons of choice, you're going to start amazing yourself. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. That's what happened with the disciples when Jesus deployed them, hear me. And they came back and said, even demons are subject to us. We didn't think we could do what you was doing. We didn't think we had the power. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. I, I helped you do that. You didn't do it by yourself. Don't rejoice in this because because just, you just want to rejoice that you're a son of God. <laughs> you just want to rejoice that we back you up, you know? So don't get puffed up in, in self because of the things that God will accomplish as you obey him. This is the mind of Christ. Christ didn't get puffed up. And he brought the, the uh, disciples low. He brought them low. So you have an inheritance to come out winning. You have an inheritance to condemn words accusations, lies of the enemy, but you got to do it God's way. Every high thing, everything that will exalt itself, everything that the devil tries to make larger than God against the knowledge of God, against what Christ says concerning you, against what God has planned for you, against what God has ordained for your destiny, against what God has put inside of you. God's going to, through his power, through you yielding your mind to him, 
renewing your mind, transforming your mind, taking on the mind of Christ, stepping out of the ways of the world and into the ways of Christ, into the ways of God, you're going to begin to see the waging of a warfare. And that warfare is going to bring you to a place of victory. Everything that your bloodline did not accomplish, did not defeat. When you apply the mind of Christ to your life, you will begin to see the fruit. You will begin to see the manifestations in everything coming to the obedience of Christ. I want to empower you to build up your mind. If you don't know how to do that, come join our mentorship. The Lord has taught me how to build up my mind, how to overcome, how to get into overthrow, how to become unstoppable to the enemy. Join our mentorship. Come be a part. Um, this is what God has assigned us to do. And we want to journey with you in purpose, in destiny. I just want to empower you, destiny travelers, to keep walking by faith. You can do it. God has placed in you everything you need to succeed. It's already in there. What you need is somebody to help you see it, hear it, and get it out. Get it out. God wants to have every son and daughter walking in overthrow, becoming unstoppable. What does that mean? The devil will shoot every shot. He will come every way that God allows him. Just like Job, God said, you could touch everything, but his soul is mine. And the devil touched everything. The devil tried Job. The devil tried to come at Job, but he could not break his mind and what his mind was rooted in. What Job believed, he had a strong mind to resist every way the devil came. His mind kept saying, but God. His mind kept saying, God is for me. There's something God is doing. Even to the degree his wife, the closest person to him, the one that saw him in an intimate way, tried to get him to say what the devil desired for him to say. He said, nope, God's up to something. Nope, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Everything the enemy tried, every thing the enemy said through his friends, through his wife, those were seeds. And we're going to talk about seeds on Friday. So you want to be on here Friday, 7 15 AM. We're going to same Facebook. If you have not followed, follow my page so that you can get the notifications, share this video. We're going to talk about the seed type in the comments, how to deal with with the seed. In order to have a strong mind, you got to know how to deal with the seed, what happens to the seed, how the seed grows, how the seed produces, how to uproot the seed. We're going to talk about righteous seed and we're going to talk about demonic seed. Be on here Friday, 7 15 a.m. If you have not registered for Women of Weight 20 and 23, it is a women's conference, but men are welcome to the evening services. So if you have men, children are welcome as well. We don't uh, isolate anybody from joining, but it is geared towards women in the day session. This is our ministry and this is what God is uh, a part of our ministry. And at this time, this is what God has told us to do and keep building. So you want to be there and you want to be in that atmosphere. Don't let the enemy counsel your mind out of coming. There is a word from the Lord. Father, I pray for those that would hear this message, that will receive this uh, wisdom, that will receive this teaching. I pray, Father, that they are empowered by your spirit. I pray, Father, that everything that you have said that will go into their that will go into their minds and into their hearts, and they will begin to confess that they are overthrowers. They are unstoppable. They have dominion. They have a strong mind, and they have the mind of Christ. They will edify themselves in God. They will affirm themselves, encourage themselves in the Lord, and get in a culture of people that will pull everything out of them that you have placed in them. I love you with the love of the Lord, and I love you with my love. Travel well. Travel well. Don't live this life 
and not do everything God placed in you. You want this earth to feel it. You want your bloodline to feel it. I want you to feel me as some people say, feel that I was here. Make your mark on this world. Be like Jesus. I finished it, Father. You want to finish well. I love you with the love of the Lord. Look, thank you for joining me. Thank you for those that sow into the ministry. Thank you for those that send the hearts and the stars on my Facebook Live. Thank you for those that are financial partners. Thank you for those that are ones that um, are empowering this ministry and uh, lifting this ministry up and journeying with us to build this uh, move of God. Be in Deerfield, be in Deerfield, be on here Friday for the power of the seed. We're going to talk about that Friday, the power of the seed. You want to be ones that have strong mind. If you're just getting on here, go back and watch from the beginning because God is doing something in the earth and he wants revival to hit this earth, but he wants people who will position themselves and say, I don't care how much it costs. I'm coming to Deerfield. I need revival. I need God to speak. I'm coming to Deerfield. I'm putting everything I have. I have people coming from Texas, people coming from um, different places in, in the earth and surrounding areas to be at this meeting because God is raising up hubs of revival. And if you are not one that will say, I will be unstoppable to get to where God wants me to get. I will not let the devil defeat me in any area because I'm going to be like Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Though he slay me, though he come against me, I'm going to get in a culture of people that will help me birth everything that God has placed in me so that I can leave this earth flourishing and empty. You want to be one that is rooted in God. Rooted, but you got to get around a culture that is affirming, lifting you up and helping to pull out everything. We're getting ready to do that with our coaching and our mentoring group. We're getting ready to pull out the scribes. We're getting ready to pull out of the, the writing anointing upon those that are writers. We're getting ready to start doing that, um, empowering them to step into their callings, their destinies. And the Lord is doing it in such a beautiful way and connecting us with the right people. It's going to be awesome join us. I love you. Have an amazing day. I see you on Friday. The power of seed, righteous seed and demonic seed. Be on here. Share this video. I love you with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Be blessed.